Challenge of the present the sustainable future panel discussion organized by HBLF. Andras Kotoja from McKinsey and Company, Akos Lukács from EY Climate Change and Sustainability Services Partner, Katalin Marton, Practical Limited, Head of HR and CSR Ethical Committee member. Our moderator for this panel is Karolina Tsaku. She is the leader of the HBLF Sustainability and Environment Working Group. A warm welcome to everyone. So it's actually not going to be András Kadocsa, but Dora Makos, who will join us in this panel. Uh, she's recruiting manager at McKinsey & Company, so this is a uh, small uh, correction that I wanted to make. And uh, now we will start our topic. Actually, we will uh, slightly uh, talk about uh, a different topic than the previous uh, ones, because we will talk about uh, non-financial risks and possibilities. It's important to know that as of 2023, 50,000 companies will report on this aspect, and there are already good examples, good, uh, either on the practice itself or the reporting process. So we will talk about um, about social capital. So we'll talk about the practices at McKinsey, EY and practiker, so we will ask for their experiences and how they can turn negative um, experiences into positive ones. My first question is to Katalin Marton. So what are the most important values based on which you uh, establish your strategies re regarding a social and human capital? Here I'm thinking about your social commitments and your HR commitments. Well, thank you for the possibility. I would also like to greet everyone. We are um, a Home Depot company with about 1,800 employees, blue collar employees around the country and we know that they are hard to to find and hard to main or retain in the company so whatever we do and whatever we formulated as a CSR strategy uh, comes from this aspect so we looked at how can we run our company in a sustainable manner in the future as well and what can we do to ensure that on a small group level I do believe that these are things that can be operated on a sectoral level, and I think this will have a positive impact on a general societal level. So in our case, we tried to started looking at uh, employee groups that are hidden. So for example, um, people with changed circumstances, people with disabilities, and we started to find them to, and, and we started to integrate them carefully and cautiously into our organization. Obviously, there's also a future aspect because the sustainability aspect will be provided by the fact that we find these groups already on the level of young people. So, for example, we have a foundation uh, that deals with children with special education needs. And, if we, and we believe if we are able to, to support them appropriately, they will be able to become fully employable adults, or even if they arrive with certain hindrances to the labor market, we will be able to make the, make the market more sensible to the fact that uh, they too are uh, fully employable people. Obviously, you deal with this topic on a very broad spectrum, but now I would like to ask um, uh, Ernst & Young's representative 
the same question. Well, thank you for the question. It's difficult to find in our field of expertise uh, those aspects that cover all aspects of uh, ESG, but we have a program with three main targets. The first one is to uh, develop the future skills of employees, then to support those companies that have an impact uh, that can play an important role in terms of society, governance, and environment. And then the third point is to protect the environment and immediate adaptation to the unavoidable uh, changes. So. These are the three targets based on which EY shapes its programs. And what is really interesting is uh, looking at the employee segment, um, the various aspects of the financing, uh, all of them have started dealing with ESG. Obviously, colleagues in the risk department and the corporate department, the bond department, they all deal with the ESG. So there's a very important retention factor to this topic, which is present in all companies. But I think I th these are harder to map in consulting groups. It's harder to find customers who look for the same ambition. So I believe that in this uh, area, I think there is less of a risk of colleagues leaving. I think there are a lot of people who want to stay and join us. Um, and uh, we have to be very... Conscious. Thank you, Dora. Well, if you ask us about our values, there are three aspects that we have to take into consideration. The first one is diversity and inclusion. We've conducted a lot of research over the past years with which we can really um, translate, uh, translate the benefits of diversity into numbers. So uh, we can see that uh, a diverse group performs better than other uh, more homogeneous groups. So for example, in a company where the upper leader leadership was constituted of mostly women, the performance uh, was better than in other uh, comparable groups. So this is the first aspect. Secondly, we are also a consulting group. So the second uh, aspect is the people aspect. So when, for example, the Russia-Ukraine uh, war started, we stopped our operations in Russia and we evacuated all of our uh, colleagues and uh, we, we moved all the hindrances, whether financial or other. Thirdly, the self-organizing uh, groups, um, these are usually based on passion or hobbies. Um, so we have a special office dedicated to deal with the mental and physical health of our colleagues, and the green office who deals with the sustainability to make sure that we become increasingly green. They implement in, um, in, in initiatives in this regard. We also have a charity champion team who are in charge of various charity uh, activities. So apparently you have various, uh, various uh, activities and of various sizes and various uh, original points, grassroots to top level. That's very interesting uh, to see. And I'd like to ask you as a recruitment manager who are the most important target groups for you and why. So if I uh, approach the issue from the aspect of uh, diversity, then we have a lot of uh, various um, 
kollégáinkat. Specialized teams, a legaktuálisabb kezdeményezésünk az a Day of Pink volt, amit éppen a community, globálisan mindenki pinkbe öltözött, és ezzel fejeztük a támogatásunkat, illetve a tartozásunkat a közösség felé. De van egy különböző Blackinzy Black Network, Network who, who bring together um, the, the um, Afro-American people. We have Hispanic groups. We also have um, uh, a committee who look at our, uh, our customers, so who are the customers that we can work for, um, what projects can we can we undertake. So their group, their activities are also very important. So, and then the self-organizing groups are also very important, which also strengthen our sense of belonging to a community. Kata, what's the case with you? I, uh, I was thinking about the Pink Day. Obviously, at our company, every day is a yellow-blue day, because that's the color scheme of our company. But joke aside, I think everything that starts internally and that enhances the commitment of employees and raises their awareness and addresses their interests, so they are our focus and target group. We have to start with them. We can provide, uh, we can provide uh, suggestions or guidelines. The way we try to include our colleagues, we, for example, last year we started an initiative uh, called um, the Summer of Movement. So what works really well for us is having a competition between uh, the, the subsidiaries or, or the individual stores. And so, for example, this event, the Summer of Movement, the, the, the goal was also to make sure that those three, uh, those three stores that win either first, second, or third place will be allowed to choose a social cause of their liking uh, to be supported by Praktika Limited. So, they had the chance to give, and it was important that they can choose the organization. Ah, that's very nice to see that your uh, your com your colleagues are so independent. Akos, what's the case with you? Um, returning to the question when sustainability became so important, I think it was the COVID that really made me realize. Um, and I think uh, the volatility of the labor pool was something that enhanced the importance of this issue. And then placing the employees into our, our main focus, obviously the most important aspect was to make sure that our colleagues um, feel well at the company. I think home office and, and um, introducing home office and maintaining home office was important. The other important aspect is that the customers are happy too. Um, so even if colleagues did not have to go to the office, it was important that we serve our colleagues. And the third was uh, a training possibilities. And here we had two important programs. Obviously, the world is going towards digitalization and a greener future. So in 2018, EY started um, two programs, a sustainability and a, a technical master program together with, with Howard University. These are free of charge for all employees and through these we try to support the, the development of our colleagues in, uh, in the sphere of ESG. My question, I'd like to, my next question is also for Akos. Um, primarily, well, you've talked about several things such as education, training, home office, aspects which all improve 
employees' willingness to work. What are you proudest of personally? And I will expect all of you to share one aspect. And um, will you report on these human-related uh, results in your ESG reports in the future? Um, so I think Tech MB is the first one uh, that I'm proudest of, even though I, I am active in a different field. I think um, the education of CFOs, of CEOs, is the most important aspect. We have to educate them because they will have uh, an increased influence on investments and thus on the solution of social and climate problems. And similar to other big fours, um, we create regional reports. I think with the CSRD in the EU, taxonomy, we will see even more details in the reporting process. And I think uh, G will play an important and similarly important role as E and S. So what I'm proudest of is the way we managed the war. So before uh, the war broke out, we had a team who monitored the situation, and this is how we were able to re uh, elk or, or uh, move basically the entire Kiev office. Before uh, before things became really heated, together with their families, so I'm very proud that we were able to place them and their families um, into safety. We also managed to collect 28 million euros to support Ukrainian refugees, and we also have a McKinsey Serves program in the framework of which we provided the opportunity to all of our colleagues to dedicate certain days to voluntary activities without having to sacrifice any of their holidays. Kata, I know that uh, you have a lot of, you wear a lot of hats and you have a lot of programs, but what are you proudest of? I'd like to highlight one. Maybe it does not reach the volume of the, com of the examples mentioned by the other panelists, but I'm very proud of our, of our uh, cooperation. So we work with um, Roma children and young people in the 8th district of Budapest, which is primarily inhabited by uh, this minority group. And uh, through this cooperation, we support these children from a very early age on, uh, or the foundation supports them from a very early age on. And we step in, um, step in at the age of of puberty when they are about to choose a, choose a career. And it's really nice to see these Roma girls come to Praktika and ask, well, would I really have the chance to work here? So this provides us with a lot of strength and motivation uh, to, to run these programs even on a local level. Thank you very much. We've heard a lot of positive examples from all of you. And I'd like to ask Kata, what do you think is the greatest challenge? What do you think is the greatest challenge and why? I don't really see a challenge so much as uh, opportunities to be solved or to be to be seized if i only look at the issue from the labor market aspect we always struggle with bringing in a labor force and i think and i am really convinced that there are so many groups so many uh, so many people who are not in our focus yet if we are able to find them to target them to educate them 
that will definitely provide us with at least half a solution to our daily challenges. Thank you. Dora, what is your take on this, as, on this issue? Yes, I can uh, absolutely identify with what Kata has said. We also put a lot of effort into this aspect and we've started a lot of initiatives to, to address an, uh, the broadest possible talent pool and to help um, a lot of people, for example, people uh, who are the first ones in their families to receive a degree or who have received degrees at less prestigious universities. We support such uh, such families, whether these are minorities in terms of minor uh, in terms of ethnicity or, or religion. So these are already university students. Yes, university students, secondary school students. We try to help on all platform. Uh, thank you, Dora Akos. Yes, uh, uh, perhaps a similar example. My concern is whether we will be able to receive a condition level with the letter S. Uh, that will uh, that will influence the risks that we deal with. Will the future consultants be ready for these risks? Will they be able to provide um, the necessary ambition to our customers? And what I'm, I think the impact that we can achieve at our customers is a much bigger one than the one that we can use or exercise as a company. So I think people are uh, ready. There is a, a layer of society of young people who want to have and lead a different life and who are ready to motivate these changes. But whether their efforts will reach the speed at which we can actually change the challenges, change the world. So this is this is one of the greatest challenges and the risks. And lastly, what I'd be interested in, obviously we've heard what you've done so far, what you do currently, what are your plans for the future, what are the things that you would be happy to share with us in this respect? Cut off. This is first to you. We don't really have new plans. Our plan is rather to stabilize our already launched programs, corporations, um, to stabilize those programs that we that we started in the past years. We would like to make sure that these become more and more stable, more intensive, and that the employees are increasingly involved in them. Thank you. I think we've already achieved a lot in terms of diversity in our Budapest office. We have colleagues from more than 20 countries. We also uh, aim at having gender parity, that is 50-50 uh, ratio between men and women, but we are far away from our targets, so we'd like to keep on working on these goals. We also pay attention to educating our um, colleagues with unconscious bias trainings. Obviously, we all have a tendency to prefer those who are similar to us to provide them with positions. So this is something that we work on avoiding. We also try to ensure that external Internal um, uh, employees become more and more successful, but I think our green office uh, has also been very successful in uh, saying goodbye to pet bottles, to recycling, to reusing uh, recycled waste, but we would like to uh, make progress in this respect as well. By 2030, we would like to be carbon neutral. So you have zero waste type of plans, for example. Thank you. Akos, I'd like to mention two goals. So by 2030, we would like to have an impact on the lives of one billion people. So on the, based on the three pillars on the employees of the future, uh, customers and the grassroots organizations that we support. So this is our global large uh, objective and additionally here in Hungary our aim is to further develop uh, our um, consultancy group for sustainability and to use the opportunities in the market. 
having reached the end of our questions, I can say that we've heard very interesting and ambitious plans at all of your companies, in spite of the fact that you come from different backgrounds. So it's very interesting to see that um, you look at this issue from different aspects on that. Um, you have both global and local objectives, which are both very, very valuable. It's nice to see that you're so engaged with the uh, with future generations, and um, it's nice that you try to address and and lift up uh, people independent of their ethnicity, gender or background. This is something I really appreciate. And now I would like to turn the turn to the audience. And although why we will not have time for questions now, you will have the opportunity to, to ask uh, questions from the panelists at the networking program after the closing speech, so they will be able to share more insight uh, on their corporate social responsibility, uh, which is an issue that we cannot emphasize enough. So thank you very much.